a number of women were a number of Kosa women amongst them a Sangoma a priest priestess diviner called Nongaus were tending crops when they heard voices calling out to them in the bush Nongaus because she was a spiritual person and a healer responded to these voices she went together with her sister Nondeto to investigate and they found a deep hollow in the ground and from this hollow they heard the voices coming and as the women knelt next to the hollow the three amazing figures emerged from the grass tall men wearing long black robes made of animal skin with very big hoods on their heads appeared out of the hollow and one of their faces were painted white or so it seemed to the terrified Kosa women and they were these men were unusually tall and they told the the woman Nongaus, whom they distinguished by her attire as a traditional healer that she must go to the Kosa people and tell them to start killing their cattle and start destroying their crops Mr. Ike, I want to show you this book, a book which was published many years ago, a book written by me and which made me one of the most hated black men in South Africa by the white establishment. In this book, I write amongst other things about a man called Sir George Gray and I, in this book I questioned certain things about this man because Sir George Gray was the creator of race discrimination and apartheid in South Africa. Apartheid was not really created by the Afrikaners it was created by this man many many years ago well sir george gray was illuminati um a black magician and uh fits the bill exactly with what happened in all these other countries you're talking about say when i questioned the when i raised questions in this book about sir george gray i was savagely attacked by nearly every professor in various universities of South Africa. The intellectual prostitutes, yeah? Yes. The liars in ivory towers, as I call them. I asked, I said that the, 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 the causes did not commit suicide in 1857 they were murdered they were manipulated by Sir George Gray into destroying themselves isn't it interesting Credo uh, I've noticed this myself that the story you just told about how those people were manipulated to kill their cattle and what have you um, is mirrored again and again in the story that has spawned religion after religion i mean whether it's mohammed or whether it's joseph smith with the mormons again and again the the initiator has a vision or an interaction with some god figure or angel and bingo they get told to do certain things and the, the rest is history yes sir. and what is most interesting is that these interesting angels have suddenly disappeared in recent times you no longer hear 
of an angel coming to tell some prophet to establish a new religion. No. Where have they gone? They, they carefully choose certain times. Now, Sir George Grace, so let me go back to him. He manipulated the Khoza people into killing themselves. And a poor woman, Nongawus, became the scapegoat because in every evil thing that has been done in Africa by the white colonialists, as well as by the Arab colonialists, there are always black scapegoats who are left holding the blame. And in this case, Nongause was. According to, Af to South African official history books, we are told that Nongause had had a dream that her people must kill their cattle, her people must kill destroy their crops. And as a result of Nongaus's dream, thousands died. And another lie was added to compound this infamous lie. We were told that Nongaus had been a child when she had this dream. But that's a lie, sir. Photographs of Nongaus taken after the terrible disaster, show her as a mature woman who is wearing a beaded blanket. And on that beaded blanket, it is shown clearly in beaded patterns that she was a Sangoma who had undergone several initiations. She was not a girl, but a spinster woman in her 25th year. And Nongaus had not had a dream whatsoever. Sir. She had seen apparitions. She had seen men who posed as gods, who were disguised as supernatural beings. And she had not been alone. And another thing, sir, the Khoza people would never have li listened to the word of any mature child on a serious matter like this. Because to all African people, cattle and crops were not regarded as their property, but rather as the property of the ancestral spirits. Now, Nongause became a scapegoat. For a long, long time, our people hated Nongaus for the dream she had supposedly had. And after I had brought questions about the story, after I had been torn apart by newspaper men, Nongaus's story was suddenly changed and totally omitted in South African history books. I can show you some of these books where this story doesn't occur at all. Taylor, is this uh, story that you're telling in, in this uh, uh, one um, incident, can you um, repeat that again and again um, across Southern Africa as the um, Europeans took over? Was it a method they constantly used? Yes, sir. Yes, you see, I can tell you a lot of things that were done. Some of the bloody wars which were started in South Africa between white men and black men were actually engineered by supposedly ancestral spirits where a king suddenly saw an apparition. Mm -hmm. Now let me tell you, sir, 